I'm on page ahead, 16 of the PCA, sir, where it says under the road map that all the nonsense that everyone has held on to, that he went back Sunday right in the PCA since everybody wants to hold the PCA accountable. It flat out says he was not there on Sunday the 14th. However, everybody wants to continue to endorse all this magnificent belief in the pings. If you go to page 16, Southern do it, under the little map, it says flat out, we do not believe he was there on the 14th. Let me explain right, what Brian's talking about right here. In the PCA, when it's talking about the phone pings, of Brian Koberger's phone pinging off the towers in Moscow, they're using those tower pings for the PCA, and they're saying that Brian Koberger came at this time. He was at this place at this time because of phone pings that they have him going to Moscow 12 times before that because of phone pings. And then they say that he came back on the yep. morning that the crimes took place. He came back between 9 and 10 for a few minutes, then went back home. And then in that PCA, they say that they can't trust the phone pings because the phone could ping off those same towers. Right. I will find it real quick and it's pull up what he's six. So this says, investigations found that the 8458 phone did connect to a cell phone tower that provides service to Moscow on November the 14th, 2022. But investigators do not believe that the 8458 phone was in Moscow on that date. The 8458 phone has not connected to any towers that provide service to the Moscow since that date. Thank so, you. He's saying that the tower pinged his phone, but they don't believe that he was there when the towers pinged the phone. And then Brian is trying to say that if the tower's not reliable for November the 14th, why is it reliable for... November the 13th or the 12 times that they claim he was in the area before. Thank you, sir. And to me, when I read it, I was like, at first, I was like, why do you, Why are you guys putting that in there? And then I kind of, this is months have gone by, and then it's like kind of like, dude, like my self-talk is, dude, they have to kind of cover their ass, okay? They're talking to the court. They don't want to go to jail for perjury. So at some level, they have to quietly admit this Correct. could all be BS. Okay. Now here's here's the problem with that argument, though. Is in this probable cause affidavit, this was for the arrest of Brian Koberger. So when this was written, they didn't have Brian Koberger's cell phone. They didn't have the ability to pinpoint his data to to use the GPS from his phone or other information other than cell phone pings to say where that phone was at what specific time. But once they have his phone and they did all the records requests, we got to remember 51 terabytes of data. That's not evidence against Brian Koberger. 51 terabytes of data is them doing a big document dump on the defense to make them have to figure out what is their case going to be rather than just turning over what they believe the case is to the defense so the defense can tailor a defense to that case. It, yeah. scanning, that's what makes that file so big. You know, right. the way they've played it is, oh, we got 5.3 Terra. Oh, please, you have That's nothing everything more. that they got. That's literally everything. Everything. Everybody they talked right. to, every document that they looked up to get information from, every search that they did every phone call that any investigator and we remember there were like 60 something investigators working on the case so there's a lot of information that's just trash and what the prosecutor did there this is what the defense is fighting against in their motions is they're saying you haven't given us what your case against Koberger is and the prosecution is saying yes we did we gave you all the information from our case you put together what our narrative is going to be because we give you the information we're working off of. I think that's backhanded. I don't think that that's a good thing Me to do too. to a defendant Me because too. a defendant needs to be able to accurately defend themselves. The burden falls on the prosecution. The prosecutor should be searching for justice. The prosecutor shouldn't be searching for a win. Yes, 51 terabytes is incredible 
incredible, though. That's it an is. incredible amount of data but for the defense to have to no, parse through. No, no. The narrative that the prosecutor is going to push in trial is what Brian Koberger's defense wants to know. Why do you think he did it? What evidence do you have to show that he did it so that they could defend him against it? It's... It's a, at the end of the day, the defense will get what they're looking for, but the prosecutor's buying time trying to make the defense request for a delay so that they don't have to do the trial immediately, and the prosecutor will get more time. So as much time as, as, as far as the prosecutor can kick the can down the road, that's what they're going to do, because then that's less time for Koberger's defense team to prepare, or... Brian Koberger's defense team will have to ask for more time, which will then get away from, oh, well, we have to do this by October, November, whatever the six-month speedy trial period is.